the Romeo Stilvio 2.0T Super Q4 2017 Review. Entry-level Pedderal Stilvio doesn't get much standard kit, but drives extremely well. Well worth serious consideration in this hard-fought segment. What is it? Alfa Romeo's long-awaited new Stelvio SUV sampled on road for the first time, albeit in its homeland and over the very Alpine Pass it is named after. While most UK-bound Stelvios will be diesel-powered, Alfa reckons the two petrol variants available from launch will make up a significant, and increasing, percentage of sales volume. Both of these use the same basic 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that we've already seen in the Julia Saloon, with both 197 bhp and 276 bhp variants. The less powerful version, tested here, is also the entry-level Pedderal Stilvio, costing £34,690 in standard form and £36,890 in the plush or super trim. As with all Stelvios, an 8-speed automatic gearbox is the only transmission choice, with the 2.0T also getting Alpha's Q4 all-wheel drive system as standard. What's it like? There's much that impresses. The Stelvio sits on the Julia's expensively developed Giorgio platform, which makes extensive use of aluminium. That makes the car lighter than its obvious rivals, on Alpha's numbers. The 1,660kg 2.0T is more than 100kg less than the equivalent Jaguar F-Pace, with the company also claiming that the body shell is exceptionally stiff. It certainly feels taut and agile, with a well damn tried that stayed civilized over the roughest surfaces that the car's eponymous pass could throw at it. High-speed refinement, as tested on the Autostrada is also excellent, only the slightest wind whistle from the top of the front door seals disturb the tranquility at a rapid cruise. Handling responses are essentially those of a taller Julia, with the two cars sharing their major chassis components and electric power steering systems. The Stilvio's helm is direct and fast acting, the front end turning keenly, and there's an impressive absence of body roll even under harder use. What's missing is any real sensation through the steering wheel beyond raw weight. Alpha is justifiably proud of how well the Stilvio resists under steer, something it demonstrated well on the pass's numerous hairpins, but in slower turns this seems largely due to the unswitchable stability control system aggressively winding back the engine when the front axle is in danger of running out of grip. Despite the rear bias of the Q4 all-wheel drive system and the claim of torque vectoring across the back axle, there's little give or throttle adjustability in the chassis, even with the controller for Alpha's so-called DNA system turned to its most permissive dynamic setting, the engine is never allowed to overwhelm grip. Given the fundamental excellence of the Stilvio's well-balanced chassis, it feels like a shame that the car isn't allowed to play more. Roberto Fedeli, Alpha's chief engineer, confirmed the forthcoming 493 bhp Quadrifoglio will have fully defeatable stability control and that the company is considering it for lesser models. Despite its peak 197 bhp output, the basic pedal engine feels more effective than exciting. It's tuned for torque, the peak 243 pounds foot available from just 1750 revolutions per minute and the 8-speed auto box shifts its ratios adeptly to keep it in the lower reaches of its mid-range, where it's happiest. It will rev when called upon to do so, from the lowly 4,500 revolutions per minute where peak power arrives and all the way to its 6,000 revolutions per minute limiter if forced to. But, although never harsh, the soundtrack lacks the zing and sparkle that used to characterize even Alpha's humbler four-cylinder engines. The electrical servo assistance of the brakes also takes some getting used to, with the pedal lacking feel under harder retardation. The system automatically compensates to eliminate the sensation of fade too, a questionable benefit on the descent from the Stilvio Pass, where the pedal stayed rock hard even as the front pad started to smolder. Some indication of the overworked anchors would have been welcome. The rest of the car feels less developed than the chassis. 
While the cabin is spacious and has some nice touches, many of the materials lack the sort of quality that buyers in this segment expect by right these days, an omission considering Alpha's insistence that we view the Stilvio as a premium player. Scratchy door trim plastics and the insubstantial controllers for the infotainment and DNA systems stood out for particular criticism. The satellite navigation feels dated and off the pace too, it won't be standard in the UK on the base model, and this might be one of the few occasions when it's not worth ticking the box. box.